Dear students, cordial welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Shankar Narayan Paliri, Assistant Professor, NSS Training College, Calicut University, Kerala. In this session, I would like to present before you a module on contemporary Indian education system, structural reforms and challenges. Let me give you a preface of the module first. This module is prepared to give detailed description on structural reforms in Indian education sector from pre-primary to higher education. India acquired drastic development in education sector after independence. Though there have many weaknesses, Indian education sector is unique in its kind and also considered very vast and wide. Awareness on contemporary Indian education system and its structural reforms will help all to know the vastness of Indian education scenario. Keeping this view in mind, this module is prepared. Specific objectives of the module are to understand the programs and reforms in Indian education at various levels from primary to higher education, to evaluate the contemporary educational development in India in the light of its structural reforms, to understand and evaluate the functions of statutory bodies like NCERT, CBSC, UGC, NAC and etc. To estimate the recent educational programs and structural reforms with a special reference to their merits and demerits. To critically evaluate the progress, structural reforms and challenges in Indian education scenario. The Indian education scenario at the time of freedom was in a raw material form. Though British rule framed Indian education in a national pattern, the sector failed to acclaim an international identity due to several reasons. Moreover, British government failed to give necessary attention to the system in the last decade of its rule because of Second World War. After independence, education became the responsibility of the states. The central government's obligations were funding, coordinating, monitoring, and specify standards. This continued till 1976 when the education became a joint responsibility of the state and the center. Education in India falls under the control of both union government and state governments with some responsibilities. Both the union government and the state governments have autonomy on many areas. The Indian constitution provides education as a fundamental right. Most education institutions schools, colleges and universities in India are controlled by the union or the state governments. India has made progress in terms of increasing primary education, attendance rate and expanding literacy to approximately two-thirds of the population after independence. We have to understand a matter that education is a concurrent list. What do you mean by concurrent list? Concurrent list in Indian constitution stands for the items on which both central government and state government have equal or near to equal responsibilities. Education lies in the concurrent list. Both central and state governments have responsibilities for educational development. State governments are responsible to follow union policies on education. The central government provides financial assistance to states to carry out educational functions other than its direct investment. Directive role on curriculum construction, implementing pattern or structure for higher education, implementation of national policies, overall monitoring of university education and research are the responsibility of central government. The agencies like NCERT, CBSC, NCTE, UGC, AICTE and such like are under the control of central government. Now we are going to discuss about the school education sector in our country. India has vast resources and centers for school education from pre-primary to higher secondary. All levels of school education achieved a high rate of development at some areas and in developing stage at some other regions. And in many regions, we still have scarcity in resources and centers for primary education. The Indian constitution assures free and compulsory education. It is a fundamental right. Government assures free and compulsory education to children between the ages of 6 and 14. It is specified under the right of children to free and compulsory education act 2009, in another word right to education act. 
formal education in India has a common pattern of 10 plus 2 plus 3. It means 12 years of school education and 3 years of college education to get the first degree. The 10 plus 2 years of school education is not in a uniform pattern in the country. Different structural systems are followed in different states. Some states have the 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2 years pattern. That indices 4 years of lower primary, I mean 1st standard to 4th standard, 3 years of upper primary, 5th standard to 7th standard, 3 years of high school, 8th standard to 10th standard and 2 years of higher secondary, 11th and 12th. Some other states have 5 plus 3 plus 4 years pattern. That means 5 years of primary, 3 years of lower secondary and 4 years of higher secondary education. 4 plus 4 plus 4 years pattern is also followed in some states. That means 4 years primary from 1st to 4th, 4 years of upper primary or junior secondary from 5th to 8th and 4 years of senior secondary schooling from 9th to 12th. Attempts are made by the central government to make the system in a uniform pattern by following 5 plus 3 plus 4 years of schooling all over India. Pre-primary education in India has two different facets, regular and specially designed. Most of the school run one or more pre-primary sessions. There have certain differently designed pre-primary schools like Montessori schools, kindergartens, Saraswati Vidya Nigedans and so. Our country acquired high development in the case of school education. It does not mean all children of the country are reaching the schools. Lot of children still remains in our nation with no access to schools. We have to construct schools at many areas of the country and so have to rejuvenate the existing institutions. Friends, now we are going to discuss about the college and university education in our country. Colleges in India offer courses from degree onwards. A degree course in any subject is for three years. This is the st structure all over the country. The three-year degree courses follow semester pattern in many universities and year pattern in some others. Post-graduation is for two years in all disciplines in all the universities. The PG courses also follow two years with four semesters. Some universities follow choice-based credit semester system both for UG and PG courses. India has more than 700 universities that include state and central universities and nearly 200 private universities. More than this, India has around 200 higher education institutions with national importance like IITs and IIMs. The country provides immense resources for research in various disciplines at universities and research centers. Now we can have a glance on contemporary Indian education, progress and reforms at school level. Education in India is provided by two ways, the public sector and the private sector. In public sector, control and funding are from three levels, central, state and local self-governments. The grantee aid system is also actively prevalent in the country. The grantee aid system, the institution is owned and managed by private parties but financially aided by government in sects including teachers salary. The students in grantee aid institutions are treated in same ways as it is in government institutions. India has made progress in terms of the primary education as well as in higher education. These developments have been credited to various private and public institutions. Country has expanding literacy to more than 80 percent of the population in the 7 to 14 age group. Let me see self-finance schools in India. Other than the government and government aided schools at the primary and secondary level, India has a large private unaided school system. Almost 29 percent of the students are receiving private education in the 6 to 14 age group. These self-financed schools provide education in state syllabus, CBSE syllabus and ICSE syllabus. The National Council of Educational Research and Training NCERT, is the apex body for curriculum related matters for school education in India. Central Board of Secondary Education CBSC, 
is the authority that affiliate schools running with NCERT CBSE syllabus. Many schools are there in private sector offering international syllabus also. They are commonly coming under the title international school. Some states have special provisions for availing occasional and technical education at the school level itself. Technical high schools and vocational higher secondary schools in Kerala are examples for such system. They operate under the monitoring of separate bodies under the education ministries of the states. The bodies that offer structure and operation for school education in India other than NCERT are the Council of Indian School Certificate Examination CISSE. This council monitors the Indian Certificate of Secondary Education ICSC class or grade 10. The Indian School Certificate ISC class grade or 12 and the Certificate in Vocational Education CVE class or grade 12. Another body that offer structure and operation for school education is the National Institute of Open Schooling. It conducts two examinations namely secondary examination and senior secondary examination. This is for all India level and also some courses in vocational education are running by NEOs. Another body that offers structure and operation for school education is for the international schools affiliated to international baccalaureate program and or the Cambridge international examinations. Other than these bodies, some other organizations also operate secondary education. They are Islamic madrasa schools whose boards are controlled by the local state governments or some of them are autonomous or affiliated to Darul Ulum Diyaband. These systems are rare in certain states but popular in some others. Autonomous schools like Woodstock School, Sri Aurobindo International Center for Education Aroville Pondicherry, Padabhavan Anandamarga Gurugula, etc. are some schools in this scenario. Now friends, we can see that what are types of schools in India? The schools in the country are in different streams such as Kendriya Vidyalayas or central schools under Kendriya Vidyalaya Sankhadan operating under Ministry of Human Resource Development. There are Navodaya schools under MHRD. Special pay setting schools for marginalized groups under MHRD or concerned ministries. Special provisions schools like Sainig schools, airport schools and so. Government schools under state governments and aided schools under the control or aid from the state governments, self finance or unaided schools and mostly the public schools by private parties. There have international schools also, they are also operating by private parties, open schooling like NEOs. Now let us discuss about the contemporary Indian education, progress and reforms at college and university level. After passing the higher secondary examination, that means the 12th grade, students can enroll for a bachelor's degree in arts, commerce or science or professional degree programs such as engineering, medicine or law. There have opportunities in agriculture, fisheries, forestry, veterinary science, aeronautics and so on. India's higher education system is the third largest in the world after China and USA. The most important statutory body at the ter tertiary and high levels is the University Grants Commission or UGC. All India Council for Technical Education is the apex body of technical and occasional education. There are other councils with national significance on different sectors like medical, nursing, teacher education and so on. Universities in India are different in types based on their rule of affiliation with UGC and mode of establishment. There have central universities, state universities, deemed universities, open universities and private universities. Some states have private aided universities also. In India, universities have independent status. They are autonomous in governance. All universities have same system of administrative bodies that consists senate or court, syndicate or executive committee, chancellor, vice chancellor, pro chancellor, pro vice chancellor and registrar. The teachers are graded assistant professors, 
associate professors and professors. There have universities with single campus and universities with affiliated colleges. In India, a propensity of establishing specialist universities is emerged during the last two decades. Many such universities are established like Rajiv Gandhi University for Medical Science, Karnataka State and Anna University of Engineering and Technology, Tamil Nadu. All universities have departments or schools in various academic disciplines. They zero in on postgraduate level courses and research degrees. They provide immense opportunities to conduct researches in any of the disciplines they have. UGC provides various scholarships and fellowships to students for studying PG courses and conducting researches. However, certain universities conduct undergraduate courses also along with the departments like B.Ed or B.Tech or B.E. India has more than 40,000 colleges. They offer courses for degree, post-graduation, M.Phil and Ph.D. in various disciplines. The college may be Art and Science College, Teacher Education College, a business school and so on. These colleges are in different schemes such as government colleges, aided colleges and self-financed colleges. UGC provides approval for autonomous colleges also. Colleges with stipulated infrastructure and facilities can apply for autonomous status. India has number of engineering colleges, medical colleges. These colleges are in various streams like Ayurveda, Allopathic, Homeo, Siddha and Naturopathy. India have business schools also, such as specialized colleges are affiliated either to general universities or no, to specific universities. India experienced a mushrooming of self-financed colleges during the last two decades. The open door policy in education provided opportunities for private investors to start colleges and other educational institutions. The policy promoted certain colleges with high quality, whereas at some occasions it supported profit-based business in education. A college must be affiliated with a university of its jurisdiction. UGC accredits colleges and universities through different accreditation agencies like NAC, National Assessment and Accreditation Council. The accreditation councils grade the college or universities based on its performance and declare the status such as A or B or C grade. Financial support from UGC depends upon the grade that acquired by the institution. The technical and vocational education is also offered at the tertiary through polytechnics, three years diploma course and ITIs, industrial training institutes. These types of institutes are run under government sector, aided sector and also in private sector. Now friends, let us discuss about different streams of higher education. India has certain institutes of national importance such as IITs, Indian Institute of Technology, NITs, National Institute of Technology, IIMS, Indian Institute of Management, IHM, Indian Institute of Hotel Management, AIMS, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, RGIPT, Rajiv Gandhi Institute of Petroleum Technology, IISST, Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, and the IIIT, Indian Institute of Information Technology and so also. Besides, there are some British established colleges such as Harcourt Butler Technological Institute situated in Kanpur and King George Medical University situated in Lucknow which are important center of higher education. The Birla Institute of Technology and Science, Pilani and Tata Institute of Social Science are also coming under this category of institutes with national importance. Now friends, we can go through the educational development and reforms in recent period. India has acquired envious development in education from primary to PhD level. Schools, colleges, universities, training centers and many other types of educational centers are enriching the setter. Even then, the country lacks proper quality in education and sufficient number of institutions. Country also lacks 
adequate facilities in running ones. Even after six decades of freedom, uneducated in villages and marginal areas of cities remaining. Many social groups and nomads are remaining without any types of education in India. Another major problem she faces is that the consequences of open door policy. The paradigm shift in the attitude and concept towards education among those who invest in the sector is a result of this policy. More specifically, we can say shift on the concept of education from social good to economic good. Higher education becomes a pay and use commodity. As of 2011 census, enrollment rates only 68% for pre-primary, 93% for primary, 69% for secondary and 25% for tertiary education. But in spite of all the shortcoming, it is indubitably true that India achieved educational development in many facets. After independence, education was under strict control and monitoring of central and state governments. The policies, curriculum and method of the operations were determined and implemented by government or government agencies only. In the latest waves of education, we can see that government is slowly depriving from the sole responsibility of education. Door has opened for private investors to open and operate educational endeavors. Private parties can open colleges or universities and can plan and practice innovative curriculum without depending government missionaries. Measures for educational development. Both central and state governments support all those who seek education. Government plans and implements many schemes like Sarva Shikshak Abhiyan, Ruza or Rashtriya Uchatar Shiksha Abhiyan and so on. Massive numbers of scholarships are available at school level. Students who get admission in Navodaya schools enjoy free residential education from 6th to 12th. Noon feeding up to high school level is there in most of the states. Test books and study materials are free to children in many states. Some other states provide free traveling, free cycles and other supporting factors. Governments open special schools to reach the education to the children with special needs. At the same time, the inclusive education is highly encouraged and measures are taken for its success. Governments in central and states take major steps for the widespread of school education in all the nooks of the society. Higher education is also in the path of development. There have many scholarships with different titles in higher education, UGC, ICSSR, CSIR and many other agencies provide big support for education and research. The scholarship for single girl education, junior research fellowship, financial assistance through faculty improvement for program for college teachers and so on are highly appreciated. Students have many choices to have higher education like polytechnics, technical institutes, engineering colleges, IITs, IIMS, medical colleges, university departments and etc. Indian higher education system is highly expanded to accommodate the vast needs of its citizens. India has taken special attempts for women education at higher level. The country has nearly 2000 colleges exclusively for women with a title of women's college. India has women universities too, SNDT University Maharashtra and Mother Teresa University Tamil Nadu are examples. The opening of colleges by private parties helped to have higher education at the reachable distance. Governments too start new colleges and universities. A new central university has started in all states in the last decade. The country is planning to rejuvenate the legendary university of ancient India, the Nalanda, to a full-fledged international university. Other than the regular universities, India has a national wide open university named IGNO. At higher education level, Nira Gandhi National Open University 
IGNO coordinates distance learning. It has a cumulative enrollment of about 1.5 million serviced through 53 regional centers and 1,400 study centers with more than 25,000 counselors. The Distance Education Council DEC, an authority of IGNO is coordinating 13 state open universities and 119 institutions of correspondence courses in conventional universities. These centers and universities ensure higher education to those who seek it at their door. Now friends, we are going to conclude this learning session. We can just review the major contents of the module. We discussed about different types of schools, colleges and universities in India. We also understood that India has very rich resources in all the sects of education. At the same time, we have to acquire more both in quality and quantity from primary to university level. We can hope for that within a short period of time. Thank you.